As usual, there has been some time since I uploaded a video. My last one was the one on my 10 euro Umatic player. Thank you for all the kind comments about that one. We have added quite a number of subscribers since it. The largest part of December I spent on the African continent as I visited Kenya, which is an amazing country of beautiful scenery, lovely people and amazing nature. Back to the month November as I waited for a train. Yes, this is going to be a pickup video again. Since the computer I will be picking up this time is located in Helmond, the place where the Home Computer Museum is located, I decided to combine the two. As always, the museum has an ever-changing setup of lovely retro systems, like this TRS-80 Model 1, with a demo on the screen. Or this Philips P2000T, a computer I hope to cover in depth soon. An Epson HX20, I love the form factor of computers like this. I almost managed to obtain an ITT Apple II, but sadly the seller didn't give in. Some other amazing computers like this ITT3030 that runs CPM and looks so amazing. This is the Sharp MZ80K, an amazing all-in-one computer and funnily enough this is the type of computer I will be picking up later this evening. Another pair of computers which form factor I really appreciate is this Alice. The Alice is a French computer which is a rebadged TRS-80 MC10. Expect to see one of these on the channel soon. Visiting the museum is also a lot of fun when you enjoy watching retro tech on YouTube, because on a table I found this IBM 7496 executive workstation. The museum is still busy trying to repair it, hopefully they eventually will. I was surprised to find how small it actually is. Next to it another interesting screen and disk drives, unfamiliar to me. I always love to take a look at all the TRS-80 stuff, like this huge 8 inch disk drive array. Or this, what I expect to be a hard drive unit with those dramatic switches. Also nice this huge Macintosh 2 machine. Another fun thing about visiting the museum is finding new computers you didn't even know existed. Like this portable computer called the Stasi, a portable Atari ST. Also, the Enterprise 64 was new to me. It appears to be a British computer trying to challenge the static spectrum. Always fun to see some Cocos. Maybe a good call for 2023 to try to add one of those to my collection. Oh yeah, and as always, Bianca joined me on this pickup and museum visit. This Amiga 2000 had a Genlock next to it. This kind of computer seems to get harder and harder to acquire. This beast is the Luxor ABC 1600, a big mystery machine with ABC Enix as the OS. Planet X2 running on an SX64, always fun. And then I discovered something I didn't know I needed. This is a program pack file. What an amazing way to store your cartridge games. Two other cool things you may recognize from YouTube are this mini CRT and this corner computer. The museum also has a store. On my last visit I picked up some goodies like a Macintosh Plus and a HP Vectra, but this time I found one of my personal holy grails. They were asking quite some money for it, but the chances of me finding it some other place are pretty slim I think. In this video I won't show it in full yet, but some people might already recognize it. So I put it on my trolley and covered it in some plastic. As you can see it was raining quite a bit during this pickup. It seems to always be raining when Bianca and I go out for a pickup. So we moved on to the next station where we picked up the Sharp MZ80K. Pickup went smooth and with the Sharp on my trolley we started our two hour journey back. 
Halfway I said goodbye to Bianca who took a different train home. So here is my Sharp MZ80K. This computer is definitely on my list of weirder systems in my collection. Like in most of my pickup videos I want to do a smoke test. The computer opens like a car hood, similar to the Commodore PET. I'm going to cheat a bit in this smoke test. See, I'm shooting out of order. Preferably I showed another type of computer from Sharp first, but I did not come around to making a video about them yet. That computer contains an Rifa cap in the power supply. So to stay away from a room filled with smelly smoke, I'm opening the power supply and checking if I need to get up my desoldering pump. Removed the power supply from the case and noticed how dusty it was. Almost like dust from a farm. And luck has it, there are no Rifa caps in there. It appears that the other caps are good too, so that's nice. Let's plug in a power cable and see what happens. We have a power light, but not a lot more. Turning it off looks very nice on the CRT. So I get a power light, but not more. Typing doesn't seem to do anything as well. The cassette deck is working, which is nice. Putting the brightness to full shows that the CRT is actually working. Power cycling got me this garbled characters, although I fear that power cycling is a bit bad for the chips. Whilst I was troubleshooting this computer, my doggo Betsy was chilling next to the fireplace. Eventually it gave me a whole bunch of text characters. Later that evening I went back to the machine to see if anything changed. While troubleshooting I gave it my usual spray of deoxid. And after turning it on I got a cursor. I pressed enter and typed a couple K's, which it took. It gives me hope seeing it takes input from the keyboard. At this moment I think the best first step to getting this machine up and running is giving it a very deep clean. Take a look at this motherboard, it's absolutely filthy. The liquid spots are from where I sprayed the dioxide. I'll have to do some research on what is the best way to clean a motherboard. Tips are very welcome in the comments section. If you have other suggestions on fixing this machine, those are welcome too. For now I want to thank you for watching. I'm very happy with my Sharp MZ80K and my Mystery Holy Grail. More on that in the future. I expect the next video to be an unboxing one since I have to show you some more cool tech I got. Thank you.